everybody has them, I've had them, I have them, you know, it happens. So I want to like make sense of the cravings for you and give you some real good tips so you can overcome your cravings. So I've actually written an ebook about my transition to a high carb raw vegan lifestyle. I've almost finished it. I'm so close to finishing it and when I do I'm going to put it up and you guys I'm sure you're going to benefit out of it because it features my blog posts from when I started on a high carb raw vegan lifestyle in 2006. So it has all where, where I stuffed up, you know, where it made us still, like so many, you know, it features where I stuffed up basically. So you're going to enjoy that a lot. So when it comes to cravings, I've got 10 tips for you. Number one is always eat sufficient calories from fruit. You have to do that because if you don't, then you're not going to have enough glycogen in your brain and your brain's going to say, hey, we need some calories, we need some carbohydrates damn quick. Go and eat that rice, go and eat that pasta, go and eat whatever. Or we need a really dense source of calories, go and eat that fat. You know, go and eat that animal fat or that milk or whatever. Now that's what's going to happen. Make sure you're counting your calories. So you go to chronometer.com and you put in your calories every single day until you're confident that you can stay on track and that you know how many calories are in things. Because now I can just eyeball something and I know how many calories are in it. A lot of people are like, oh my god, you know, I can't eat any more fruit. You know, I'm so full after one banana. You gotta try harder. If you think you're full of one banana, you're seriously mistaken. You're not in tune with your body. The people who say I'm full of one banana, then go and eat ice cream. Go and eat like half a tub of ice cream. So you really just have to be patient and keep getting the calories in consistently. Sometimes you have to eat when you don't want to eat. You know, you may not feel like eating, but I've noticed as soon as we bring the fruit up to our lips and our taste buds taste that carbohydrate, that's when, you know, it, it registers in our brain, oh, we need food. And then it starts to taste better and we can get the food in. So sometimes you have to be like a robot. You know? Okay, so you might have to do some bicep curls, some banana peel bicep curls. Smoothies are really good because they help you get more calories in. When we're sort of drinking it, even though you have to chew it, but it's still sort of a drink, when we're having it in that form, it's so much easier to get more calories in. Okay, so really concentrate on smoothies early on in your journey and forevermore. You know, like I have a lot of smoothies. Most of the time, two of my meals out of a day are smoothies. If you don't know why you're feeling a certain way, you know, why you're having a craving, then how are you going to know how to fix it? You're not going to know. So you need to educate yourself. Carbohydrates are brain fuel. Okay, if you're not getting enough glucose to your brain, then you're going to be craving things. You know, people try and complicate it all the time. They try and say, oh, you know, like, it's not that, it's not, I don't need calories, it's because I was abused as a child, or I'm just having an emotional day, or whatever. It's not that, okay? You need calories. And the brain gives you pain as a motivator to get calories. You know, at first I was just doing it completely wrong. You know, I was reading David Wolf's book, um, Sun Food Diet Success System, and it's a great book for motivational aspects, like it's got a lot of stuff that Tony Robbins says in there. You know, it's good for that reason, but oh my god, it's confusing. And it does not say anything about counting calories, doesn't emphasize eating large quantities of fruit. Now I'm looking back, I'm thinking, WTF, where's the fruit? Honestly. If we don't have large quantities of fruit, then we're going to go to fat, we're going to go to salads with fatty sauces and stuff like that. And then we're going to wonder why we want to binge out on like fatty, sweet, raw cakes and stuff like that, or like cook cakes. It's because the carbs, remember the carbs. I took myself away from those social eating events that I used to go to. You know, my friends used to invite me out, they're like, come on, come, come to the restaurant, come to dinner, blah, blah, blah. 
And at the time, I was really unstable. You know, I was like, oh God, I don't think I can stay raw and go to a restaurant. You know, now I have no problem at all. It's easy. But at the time, I was too shaky to put myself into that environment. It's like an alcoholic going to a liquor store. And by the way, alcohol, alcoholics, they are just carb carbohydrate deficient as well. Because alcohol is carbs. Yeah, so social events, like just for the first couple of weeks, take yourself out of these events. You don't need to meet your friends over food. Why? You don't need to. Don't say, oh, you know, but I've got such a, a big social life. Organize to meet them in the park, go for a jog together, do something outside of food. Or if you really, really have to go, you've got to eat a lot beforehand. But I'm telling you, within the first couple of weeks, I recommend you just remove yourself from those challenging situations. Give yourself a fighting chance, for God's sake. I participated more on the Raw Food Forum that I was on at the time. This really helped a lot because there was support on there. You know, people were encouraging me. You know, I was held accountable for what I was doing. And it just, it helped immensely. So I, I recommend you go on 30bananasaday.com and be a part of the community. Because community equals support. Honestly, it's the best support community for high carb raw vegan, for raw vegan, like on the planet, on the web. It's huge. So, and then when you go on there, help other people. So when you help other people, that makes you feel good. And then you want to look after yourself. You become an inspiration to others. And it just all falls into place more. Okay, big one is making a pain and pleasure list. And carrying that pain and pleasure list around with you everywhere. Alright, you know, just stick it in your back pocket, put it in your wallet, stick it on the wall, stick it on your fridge, wherever. You need to have that pain and pleasure list somewhere handy for when you get challenged. So number one is you need to eat enough fruit, obviously, and that's what's going to be most important. But the pain and pleasure list is going to back that up. It's going to keep you on track. You know, rip that list out and look at those reasons. Remember the reasons you came to this lifestyle and constantly remind yourself or else you're going to be off the wagon pretty quickly. It's going to be even harder too. If you haven't eaten enough, you bring out that list. The list might mean nothing to you then. It may, it may, you may have enough pain. Like I had a lot of pain myself. You know, when I came to this lifestyle, I was really... You know, suffering from you know, border, borderline chronic fatigue syndrome, acne. I was you know, at least 20 kilos overweight as far as I'm concerned. And I had systemic candida. So I had a big, big list and big, big pain. All right, so write your list. Write down why you came to this lifestyle. You know, what pain will you experience if you go back? Okay, and what pleasure are you going to experience if you stay on this lifestyle? Consider becoming an authority in the raw vegan movement. Okay, so th this has really helped a lot for me. Is you know people look to me for inspiration. So if you're thinking, oh, you know, I wouldn't mind sort of like a career in this industry or something, and I do it. We need more people, All right? And that's going to help you keep on track because you're going to become inspiration to others, and they're going to hold you accountable. Okay, visualization is a big one. You know, it's not any. <laughs> This is not hippie shit, okay? And it's actually really, really awesome and it works. I've designed my whole life using a vision book and it is, I, I think I'm doing all right. You know, I'm, I'm happy with how my life's going. And I look back over my vision book, it's all laid out there. The map is just there. I have followed that map almost exactly. Go to fruit festivals and be around people who are doing the same thing as you're doing. I know when I went to the fruit festival this year, it was, it was amazing. Like even though I was, I was already on the lifestyle, just being around like a hundred other people, more than a hundred other people doing the same thing and being carved up, it was so good. You know, when people have enough carbohydrates, it's like, God, I've never been to a gathering of people in such a good mood. So 
that is a big thing. Go to festivals, like surround yourself with people doing the same thing so you feel supported in real life, not just online. And throw raw food picnics, you know, invite people over, start to meet people, get out of your comfort zone. Make bananas and dates your staple. They're so important. Like bananas and dates are like the rice of the high carb raw vegan movement. And if you think you're allergic to bananas or dates, I don't know, you know, because people eat a whole lot of other foods, like, you know, meat and dairy, for instance, and then they have a banana and they have some sort of reaction and they're like, oh, it must be the banana. But come on, does that make sense really? You know, you're putting in something that is not meant to be in your colon and in your stomach, and then you're putting something like a banana that is meant to be in there, and then you're blaming the banana. I don't think so.